As we get further away from the dramatic events of the announcement to the nation in the final hours of 2020 that a Brexit deal had been reached between Great Britain and the European Union voices within the fishing industry have been getting louder, saying the deal stinks. Hailed by Boris Johnson and his government as taking back control of our waters this government gave promises and has continued to promise it will end super trawlers fishing in Britain's waters. But at the time it was giving these promises it was simultaneously issuing more than 2,000 licenses to EU vessels some class to super trawler. The term super trawler generally refers to large trawlers over 100 meters in length. They catch hundreds of tons of fish every day using nets up to a mile long and can process their catch on board which leads to them also being called factory ships. The term factory ship is accurate. Fish are caught filleted, skinned and frozen ready for offloading in port. Usually an EU port although they occasionally land in other ports including the UK. Straight onto the freezer trucks for onward transmission to market. Many of these factory ships are modern state-of-the-art vessels but new ones have reduced their size to around 50-80 meters in length. They now trawl in packs, each taking hundreds of tons of fish a day out of our waters after spending a few days fishing an area they move on leaving little catch left for artisanal local fishermen. To make the operation profitable the vessels need to hold lots of EU quota and many, as I have spoken about many times before, have UK registration. The vessel's owners are registered at Companies House London but are a subsidiary of much larger companies who reside in an EU member state. In a recent case in September 2020 the French trawler label Normandy was laden with quota bought out by a Dutch company. The quota was moved to several of the Dutch company's factory ships the crew were dismissed and the boat disposed of it became a national scandal. Three of the largest Dutch fishing companies are Cornelis Vrolijk, Paar Levliet and Van der Plas, P&P and Willem van der Zwaan. Between them they own, through their subsidiary companies, 17 trawlers over 80 meters in length which could be classed as super trawlers or factory ships. They all operate in European waters. Initially set up as family businesses they have now absorbed many European companies accumulating more and more quota, whether through the ITQ, individual transfer quota, systems in Holland and the UK, or through the purchase of boats as in the case of the Label Normandy. This accumulation of large amounts of quota and marine resources by shareholders of these Dutch companies is worrying to artisanal fishermen who are not only concerned over the holding of large amounts of quota by industrial size fishing companies, but also the potential damage both to fish stocks and the marine environment wrought by these ships. Vessels which catch fish in such huge numbers using massive nets also trawl up masses of unwanted or unsaleable species. This by catch which has no economic value and cannot be landed, is thrown back into the sea dead. It becomes seagull food and an environmental disaster. Since the early 1980s the European Union has invested several billion euros in public subsidies to develop its fishing capacity despite environmentalists repeatedly attacking this model of fishing. Unfortunately for Britain's artisanal fishermen, more than 80% of Great Britain's fishing fleet use boats off 10 meters or less many of the companies in question are well represented and can call upon powerful lobby groups within the EU Parliament. According to a BBC report, January 2021, more than half of England's fishing quota, £160 million, is in the hands of vessels owned by companies resident in Iceland, Spain and the Netherlands. This amounts to 130,000 tons a year. These powerful fishing concerns also lobby heavily in our Westminster Parliament under the guise of wholly owned UK companies appealing to gullible MPs looking to raise their profile with the electorate. They often fail to carry out due diligence and research, or are simply unable or unwilling to see the bigger picture and give their support to Great Britain's struggling fishermen. They ask questions in Parliament on behalf of these companies about access to member state fishing grounds but are silent on the EU-UK deal which they gave their support because either they had not read it or had not understood the impact it would have on UK artisanal fishermen. For the government to regain the support and confidence of Britain's fishing industry once again it is my belief that we must review the Merchant Shipping Act. Vessels registered in the UK must be at least 60% British owned. They must have UK offices and owners must be resident in the UK and pay tax to the UK. At least 60% of the crew should be British and again resident in the UK and paying UK tax. They must land, process and sell 60% of catch in Great Britain.
On a more technical but vital note we must ensure the Fisheries Act 2020 Section 25 is being enforced particularly Sec 25, 1, b, which relates to environmental, social and economic factors. The key points are these. 25, 2, a, the impact on fishing to the environment, c, the contribution of fishing to the local economy, 25, 3, b, the use of fishing techniques that have a reduced impact on the environment, for example that use less energy or cause less damage to habitats, the waters surrounding the United Kingdom are a natural resource belonging to the people of Great Britain under international law, we are the guardians and the recipients of its bountiful supply of fish, food for the nation's table, it must be defended and held for the financial benefit of the United Kingdom its people, its fishermen and the generations of fishermen to come.